Oh, hello, everybody, and welcome back for the second segment of the August 6th Trips and Traps up in beautiful Saratoga. Andy Serling and Eric Donovan. Good mix of races to show you. We got uh, some two-year-olds. We also got some turf races. No better races for finding uh, trips than two-year-olds and turf races. Let's get into it. Uh, this is the uh, sixth race from uh, August 1st. A first-time starter in here, I thought, ran pretty well this day, 85 and a 50. And we're also going to take a look at another horse, the five on vacation, who's actually right on the lead here right now. Yeah, it's amazing. We just want to show you that on vacation breaks on top in this race. This is a second-time starter for Alan Iwinski actually shipping up, having run a maiden race for the other, run against the horse that, that, that won a maiden race we showed earlier in Trips and Traps in the other division. But of course, the horse who finishes third in here, 85 and a 50, a first time star from Gary Contessa that I had about 40 or 55 tips on or something, uh, somehow managed to go up 27 to 1, and I ignored all of them, and wouldn't have won, but boy, he run his eyeballs out. He sure does right here, going up to contest the uh, heavy favorite in this race, Discreetly Mine, who's uh, on the inside, 85 and a 50 on the outside, and we just saw On Vacation kind of drop back a little bit. We'll show you the head-on and what happens with On Vacation, but you see right here, 85 and a 50 going head-to-head -head, uh, with Discreetly Mine, and that'll set it up for a couple of closers in the race, the 6 Dublin and the 11 Hockley, you get perfect trips here. You know, 85 and a 50, tip to you and me. 27 to 1 in here. Couldn't really understand that, but uh, certainly ran very well here. I think, though, second time out, you're looking at a much shorter price than 85 and a 50 here. Yeah, no question about it. And also, we're going we're gonna to just show you where on vacation is. And this is the kind of race, these races, you really have to watch the head on. So we'll show some of that on to see what happened to him. He was on the lead, and he ends up back and last in the race, and he does have some trouble. It's odd. Uh, 85 and a 50 really, as you said, ran lights out here. It's going to be a much, much shorter price. This is a horse that ran his heart out first time, that the connection clearly had cranked up to win his debut and did a very good job and were unlucky to lose. On the other hand, these are not the kind of horses that usually come back and run that well in their next start. He has ability, but I don't think he's going to recover that easily from this race. We'll be interested to see when he runs and how well he runs. Now. Here's On Vacation, uh, we just had highlighted before in between horses. There's going to be some bouncing around here in Vacation. On Vacation gets you know, kind of hit by, the, uh, hit by another horse on his left side there and gets drifted out about three or four pass, and then after that just kind of drops back. So, you know, that could be a traumatic experience for a horse that hasn't had much racing experience. They're not really used to, uh, used to racing in tight packs like that. When you get like a hip check from the side there, that, you know, just kind of throws them all out of whack. You hope they don't get hurt, but uh, uh, certainly that could be a traumatic experience for a horse with not much racing. Right. They're not cars running around slots. They're animals. <laughs> and these are very young horses without much experience, you said. And that bump obviously affected this horse dramatically because he drifted out after that and he drifted back to last. And then he came back on. And yeah, it was a fast pace came apart, but he still came back on and finished sixth. On a vacation as a horse, I'm very interested to see the next time he runs because I think he's got a little bit buried off this race and he's much better than he looks. You're going to have to keep an eye out for him. Trainer Alan Iwinski can pop, pop, pop him in at any track throughout the uh, Mid-Atlantic. So I'll uh, put him in your stable man for sure. Let's get on to another uh, two-year-old. We're going to Take a look at Dinah Zapper, a first-time starter from August 2nd. This is a race number five. Dinah Zapper going to get off to a slow start here. This is a uh, first-time starter from the barn of Bill Mott by Go Zapper, obviously. Dinah Zapper, if you could see right now, the jock's hands kind of go up in the air, have to steady uh, right after the start. Yeah, and this is an interesting ra race. To tell you the truth, this was a big field, an 11-horse field of two-year-olds, with a remarkable lack of trouble in it. It really was a very fairly and evenly run race. You have this horse that's sitting second early, ends up running second. The winner had an absolutely perfect trip, was a Stan Hop second time star that did get it done. The third horse was a first time star, Steve Placeris, took some money. Uh, and up here at six to one, he's getting bet in these big fields. A lot of horses getting bet. That horse made a nice close. Dinah Zapper was the one horse that had a little bit of trouble in here. And a Bill Mott first time starter in the dirt, nine to one. That's bet for Bill Mott, and he doesn't really win these races and overall I thought he was the one or she was the one horse that maybe had a bit of a trip. The pace gets a little hot around the turn certainly the field starts to spread out a little bit more you saw Dinah Zapper you know relatively close to where she is now not even on the screen right now she's just barely I think uh, gonna be getting on right about now maybe down toward the inside there uh, in the yellow cap so really you know for a horse that seemed like she was only seven or eight lengths back she certainly dropped maybe you know 12 or 13 lengths back that's not just gonna it's just not gonna get it done in these two-year-old races and you see Dinah Zapper in here kind of racing down and Side, getting some dirt thrown up in her face. Going to make a, a, a good finish here, though. I think this horse really got on track late, and you know, wouldn't be surprised to see her stretch out next time out and run better. Yeah, no, I agree. Dinah Zapper has ability. 
there's no doubt about it. And ran a sort of nice, smooth race, all things considered in here. And I like the way she finished up at the end. And I don't think we're talking about a horse going to be a major price the next time. But this is a horse that can clearly run a little bit and will benefit greatly from this one race. Yeah, the trouble's not so obvious with her, too. So I think maybe for betting her next time out, you, you, you know, you might be in a good spot here. And you're going to see the uh, problem there for Dinah Zapper at the start. Kind of ran up on uh, some other horses' heels there after breaking a little bit slowly. So all in all, I think uh, an effort that Dinah Zapper will definitely move forward off of. Right. Dinah Zapper would be the horse out of this race I want the most. You know, we'll see. We'll see how they are when they come back. And we'll see where they're facing. But Dinah Zapper is probably going to be okay. Uh, let's get on to our final race in this segment here. We'll take a look at the four-star Dave, one of Andy's uh, favorite horses, the uh, number six horse. Wesley is the one we're taking a look at. Easy horse to follow, the number six, and, the, uh, and is Greg. Yeah, he's gray with a purple silk, so we're not going to highlight him. You can find out where he is. And it just seems to me, look, I know Wesley's been a bit of a disappointment, but at times he's run some pretty good races, to be honest. And, and I think that he, he, things could have worked out better for him. He, he's a horse. I mean, you look at him here. First of all, he's, he's a little over two to three, about two wide, two to three wide in the first turn. And he's never setting comfortably. You can see the winner is seeing that perfect tuck about fifth or sixth, Just Enough Humor, getting his always perfect trip. And you compare these two horses. First of all, Just Enough Humor probably has more speed uh, than, than, than Wesley. But Wesley ends up ahead of him here. Wesley needed to settle back and relax at the back of the pack, and he gets the opposite of that trip. He looks like he's the kind of horse that might need to be covered up because it looks like once he was in the clear uh, on the outside, he kind of started to want to go a little bit. Jackie Javier Castellano was trying to, uh, I think, reserve him a little bit here, but then gets forced into making really what is a, a four or five wide move coming around the turn here. Either you're going to take him way back and you know lose a couple lengths there, or you're going to be forced to make this wide move here. And uh, Castellano, I think, kind of in a no-win situation at this point here. I guess. I guess he is. And you can see just enough humor to his inside. And Alan Garcia sitting patiently. We began and end these strips and traps with Alan Garcia sitting patiently on the inside and being rewarded. And this is the part that really gets me. What is this? What is this four wide rush up on the turn? How is this winning races? This is a one run closer. And he's making this premature wide move. And it's just going to end up in disaster. I don't think any of us, I know I'm not saying, I know that you believe less than me, saying Wesley was going to win this race. But considering the dynamics and the way the race was run and the way he was ridden, he had absolutely no chance whatsoever. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the, more, the more I watch the race and think about it, I agree with you 100%, actually. Now, in terms of betting Wesley back next time out, you know, the horse that finishes second in here, actually, Wesley beat uh, Mambo Meister uh, back at the Calder in, in, the, in the early earlier part of the year. So, you know, this is a horse in Wesley that, you know, you, you got to see what kind of spots he ends up. And obviously, he could be in a spot where there could be a couple of horses that are going to be tough. Uh, uh, you know, maybe you're looking at him in the 10-to-1 range for a horse to round out the exotics, or maybe he's in a spot where you think he could win, and maybe you get 5 or 6-to-1. Yeah, he's going to find a spot and the cliffhanger uh, is the cliffhanger is at the stake at the Meadowlands in the fall and and if he gets the right spot gets a fair pace and is allowed to drop back and you look at this race the first and second finishers moved up on the inside they had those perfect trips while he's making the premature wide move he was totally anti-dynamics and that's what I'm looking for in a turf race I want one chance with Wesley to get that relaxed ride and make one run in a fair spot with a fair pace. We'll see if I ever get it. I'm probably asking too much. Maybe we'll see him uh, later in the meet. Did win up here at Saratoga last year, right? So uh, maybe a horse that uh, will actually uh, run back here and uh, like the course. He could, he could run in the Baruch. We'll see how that race comes up. It really comes up pretty tough. Anyway, that does it for this week's Trips and Traps. We appreciate, of course, everybody watching. Once again, the email address is trips and traps at nairainc.com. We love hearing from you and we appreciate your watching. Thanks. We'll see you next week.